the riverlands consist of the rich, fertile, and populous areas around the three forks, three rivers of the Trident, and the northern part of Blackwater Rush River, located roughly in the center of the continent and with few geographical boundaries, such as mountains. For centuries, it has been a borderland between surrounding strong kingdoms. During the Dawn Age, the first man settled in the riverlands, coming into conflict with the native children of the forest. After centuries of fighting, a pact was signed at the Isle of Faces. The children withdrew to their forests, while the first man raised their kingdoms in the lands ceded by the mysterious folk. During the thousand years that followed, various families ruled the riverlands as river kings, claiming the titles King of the Trident or King of the Rivers and the Hills. Last of those dynasties were the Muds. The time of the first man river kings came to an end with the Andal invasion. King Christopher IV Mud raised his armies and met the Andal invaders. Christopher was said to have won 99 out of his 100 battles against the Andals, but in the final battle he was killed. His son and successor, Christopher V, was not as successful as his father, and the kingdom fell. Various Andal dynasties ruled these lands for a long time, becoming native to the land till the last native kings, the Teaks, were killed by the Storm King Arlen III Durandon in the Battle of Six Kings. Several leaders rose in rebellion and even reigned, albeit for a short time before being put down by the might of Storm's end. The Storm Kings, in turn, were defeated by the Iron King Harvin Hardhand who established his own kingdom from the Iron Islands to the Riverlands. Harwin's grandson, Harren the Black, ordered the construction of an immense castle, Harrenhal. Construction of Harrenhal took 40 years and a huge amount of resources and money to build. Ironically, the same day the most immense castle in history was finished, Aegon Targaryen, the Lord of Dragonstone, landed in Westeros with his dragons. So thus it came to be that at the time of Aegon the Conqueror's assault, it was assisted by an uprising against Ironborn, led by House Tully. Harren thought if he refused battle, Aegon would have to lay siege Harrenhal with the River Lords. Instead, Aegon led his dragons attack. The heat produced by the dragons was so great that much of Harrenhal burned and melted, killing Harren and his children. After the burning of Harrenhal, Aegon raised Lord Edmund Tully to dominion over the Riverlands, below the sovereignty of the Targaryens as the Lord Paramount of the Trident. Thus, Riverlands are not technically counted as one of the Seven Kingdoms, because of the lack of native king ruling these lands during Aegon's conquest. However, the Riverlands and their rulers are equal to any other region of the realm. Its central location borders Riverlands with every other kingdom of Westeros, except Dawn. House Frey of the Crossing guards the north part of the Riverlands. It is a noble house and their main seat a pair of castles on each bank of the northern green fork of the trident that serves as the vital bridge across the river. The lord of the house is called the lord of the crossing. House Frey is one of the younger houses in Vesteros, dating back some six centuries when its founder was awarded lands and nobility. The founding Frey had a vision of building a great bridge spanning the green fork of the trident and began its construction. His grandson ultimately finished the bridge's construction and built wooden keeps on both sides as well. 
Later generations replaced the timber keeps with identical stone keeps that were named the Twins. A large tower was constructed in the middle of the bridge and called the Water Tower. The Twins' defensible construction and strategic location allowed the phrase to prosper by exacting tolls for passage across the river. The phrase grew into one of the richest and most powerful houses of the Trident. Their quick rise to prominence has caused other powerful houses to look down on them as upstarts. The Freys also became bitter rivals with their neighbors to the north, the Kranigmen, ruled by House Reed. Under their current lord, Walder Frey, they have grown greatly in both size and power, and most current Freys tend to share the weaselly appearance of Lord Walder. One of the most powerful bannermen of the Tullys, the Freys can field a thousand knights and three thousand foot. The words of House Frey are, we stand together. House Frey got few vassals of their own. House Erinford, a lesser knightly house. House Hay, also a knightly house. House Charlton, and House Nayland of Haxmire, also a lesser knightly house. Haxmire and Seven Streams, our villages one must pass if intends to go around the Blue Fork. Those locations are full of bogs and bad roads. House Malister of Sea God. The castle is near the headwaters of the Blue Fork of the Trident River. The Malisters are long standing enemies of the Ironborn, as Sea God was built as a defense against pirates from the Iron Islands. How Smallister boards are above the rest. Old Stones was the castle of House Mud that died out, although in their time it had a different name. The Muds once ruled as kings of the rivers and the hills. They were the last of the first men to rule the Trident, reigning for over a thousand years. King Christopher IV Mud also known as the Hammer of Justice, was the fourth king of the rivers and the hills to bear that name. A monarch of the first man from House Mud, his script lies among the ruins of Old Stones. Fair Market is a town on the Blue Fork of the Trident. It is located mostly on the southern shore of the Blue Fork, but it has a wooden bridge that spans the river. House Blackwood of Raventree Hall, that is located along the banks of the Red Fork of the Trident, is one of the main families sworn to House Tully. House Blackwood were once lesser kings during the Age of Heroes. The Blackwoods hold an ancient grudge against their neighbors, House Bracken of Stonehatch. The Blackwoods believe that the Brackens poisoned the Weirwood at Raventree Hall. The two houses which hold the blood of the first men in their veins and merged with the invading Andals rather than being annihilated by them competed for the throne of the Riverlands when it was an independent kingdom. The enmity was increased when House Bracken converted to the faith of the Seven. House Blackwood, however, is one of the few major noble houses outside of the North, which continues to worship the old gods of the forest, and never converted to the faith of the Seven. House Bracken of Stonehenge According to the Brackens, the Blackwoods were vassals who betrayed the Brackens and usurped their crown back in the days. There have been numerous pieces between the Brackens and Blackwoods, many sealed by marriage, but the feud always restarts. Pennytree is a village in the Riverlands located north of the Red Fork in the disputed border area between Stonehenge and Raventree Hall. The surrounding lands have frequently changed hands in the ongoing conflict between House Bracken and House Blackwood.
Penny Tree is situated near the Widow's Wash between two grassy hills known as the Teats. It is named for a huge old oak tree that grows by the duck pond to which hundreds of copper pennies have been nailed. The village Holdfast, as strong as any in the Riverlands, has thick stone walls 12 feet high behind which the people of Penny Tree retreat at the sign of trouble. House Lichester of Castle Lichester All of Lord Lichester's sons died during Robert's rebellion, some fighting with the Targaryens, some with Robert Baratheon. The keep is small and square, but has fallen into disrepair. House Smallwood of Acorn Hall Smallwoods are sworn to house vans of Wayfarer's Rest, so is House Lichester. Acorn Hall is a small castle with stone curtain walls and a large oak keep. The wards of House Smallwood are from these beginnings. House Goodbrook Lord Goodbrook was one of the lords from the Riverlands that stayed loyal to King Aerys II Targaryen during Robert's rebellion instead of following the banner of their liege lord. For this, Lord Hoster Tully descended upon the Goodbrooks and destroyed at least one village. After the war, his son made peace with King Robert I Baratheon and Lord Hoster, but the wealth of the Goodbrooks had been substantially reduced from the fighting. House Vance of Wayfarer's Rest is one of the two great branches of House Vance in the Riverlands, the other one being House Vance of Atranta. House Vance of Atranta is the second great branch of House Vance. Armistead Vance was the mightiest of the Andal conquerors who defeated King Christopher IV Mud during Andal invasion. House Piper of Pinkmaiden is one of the chief noble houses from the Riverlands. Its seat at Pinkmaiden Castle is located close to the border with the Westerlands. The wards of House Piper are brave and beautiful. There are several small towns located by the Westerlands border like Mammosford, Sherer and Vandish Town. All three were raided by the forces of Sir Gregor Clegane. Stony Sept is a large town near the border of the Westerlands and close to the source of the Blackwater Rush. It was the site of one of the most important battles of Robert's Rebellion. Robert Baratheon hid in the town with the aid of the small folk. When the royal army arrived to search the town from house to house, the bells of the local sept were rang, giving the battle its name, the Battle of the Bells. The arrival of Eddard Stark, John Arryn and Hoster Tully secured the rebel victory. Stony Sept refers to a sept and its surrounding town. The Sept itself sits on a hill. The heart of Stony Sept is a market square with a fountain in the shape of a leaping trout. Stony Sept isn't nearly big enough to be considered even a minor city, but it is a fairly large market town. Tumblers Falls is a town near Stony Sept. Here, Lannister army joined forces with the army of the Reach before the Battle of the Blackwater, that became possible because of the foolishness of Admiral Tully. House Harleton of Castlewood The castle is located along the shores of the Blackwater Rush. The family also owns a manse in King's Landing. Harrenhal, the largest castle in the Seven Kingdoms, is the seat of House Vent in the Riverlands on the north shore of the God's Eye Lake. Since it's burning by Dragonfire in the War of Conquest, however, it has become a dark and ruinous place. King Harren Hoa's grandfather led the Ironborn to conquer the Riverlands, previously occupied by the Stormlands. 
the ironborn cared nothing for the inhabitants of the mainland, and their rule was brutal and tyrannical far more than any previous occupier. To consolidate their hold on the riverlands, Haran's grandfather commissioned construction of a great fortress on the northern shore of the God's Eye Lake, in the very heart of the region, the largest and greatest fortress ever built in Vesteros. It took three generations to finish. The Ironborn broke the backs of the Riverlanders in forced labor to complete an instrument for their own domination. The great castle was finally finished in King Haran's time, and he arrogantly named it Harrenhal, after himself. On the very same day that the last brick was laid, however, Aegon Targaryen and his sisters landed with their army from Dragonstone at the mouth of the Blackwater River, along with their three dragons, beginning the War of Conquest. Haran thought the walls of his massive castle could withstand any assault, but he did not realize that the dragon could simply fly over them. In the burning of Harrenhal, Aegon used his dragon Balerion to roast King Haran and all of his sons alive within their own tower. Afterwards, Aegon Targaryen granted Harrenhal to his bannerman of House Coheris, which eventually became extinct. They were followed by houses, towers, Harrowway, Strong, Lofton. All of them, like the Hors and Coheris before them, died out, leading to the castle be considered a cursed place. Several tales are told of Harrenhal including the tale of Mad Lady Lofton and of servants who go to sleep and are found turned to ashes the following day. Rulers of Harrenhal usually lose money simply by possessing it. As a result, Harrenhal is rarely, if ever, fully manned. Moreover, it was never fully repaired after being blasted with dragonfire by the Targaryens 300 years ago. The fact that the garrison is never as large as the fortifications require means that Harrenhal really isn't one of the most defensibly formidable castles in Westeros. The surrounding lands subject to Harrenhal are actually some of the richest and the most fertile in all Westeros, being located in the watersheds of both the Trident River and God's Eye Lake. In peacetime, a noble house can actually become quite wealthy from holding Harrenhal, provided that they hire only a skeleton force to defend it instead of a full garrison. Even the most productive farmlands in Westeros cannot support enough troops to fully garrison it. Castle has five towers of dizzying size with equally monstrous curtain walls. The walls are incredibly thick and its rooms are built on a scale. Harrenhal covers three times as much ground as Winterfell, and it's so much larger that they can scarcely be compared. Its stables can house a thousand horses. Its godswood covers twenty acres. Its kitchens are as large as Winterfell's great hall. However, much of Harrenhal has far gone into decay. Of the castle's five towers, the shortest is half again as high as the tallest one in Winterfell, yet none of the towers are proper, being bent, lumped, and cracked from the melting of the stone during the burning of Harrenhal. A town named Harrentown is found near Harrenhal. House Mouton of Maidenpool this is one of the main ports and trade centers of the Bay of Crabs. According to legend, this was the location where Florian the Fool saw Jonkil first time while she was bathing with her sisters. The words of House Mouton are Wisdom and Strength. House Cox of Saltpans. Saltpans is a seaside village near the border between the Whale and the Riverlands. 
it is named for its salt harvesting industry. Salt pans has never been an important trading port, but ships do call there from time to time. House Cox is a house of landed knights. House Derry of Derry. Though old, Derry is a relatively small castle. The small building where the Derrys have their apartments is called the Plowman's Keep. It had been one of the more prominent and powerful houses of the Trident until the fall of the Targaryens in Robert's Rebellion. During Robert's Rebellion, Sir Willem Derry smuggled Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen away from Dragonstone across the narrow sea following the sack of King's Landing. House Vode is a knightly house sworn to House Went of Harrenhal. Their lands lie close to the border with the Crown Lands. Two brothers rule these lands, each of whom holds a castle. The wards of House Vode are Touch Me Not, House Root of Lord's Haraway's Town. It is the seat of House Root, but it is named after extinct House Haraway. The sacred island in the middle of the lake called the God's Eye. It is one of the few known locations of weirwoods in the south of Westeros, with most others having been cut down and burned. The isle is where the first men and the children signed a pact. In celebration, every weirwood of the island was given a face so that the gods would witness the pact. Some maesters have conjectured that children of the forest survived the Andal invasion on the isle. House Tully is one of the great houses of the Seven Kingdoms. Lord Hoster Tully, the Lord Paramount of the Trident, rules over the Riverlands. House Tully is an old, noble house of first man origin, dating back to the Age of Heroes. Tully's knelt to the Andal conqueror Armistead Vance after Christopher's death. Given the Riverlands' geographic vulnerability, House Tully has often soft alliances. Lord Huster Tully sought to vet his brother, Sir Brynden Tully, hero of the War of the Ninepenny Kings, to Bethany Redwine, but Brynden would have none of it. Brynden took the moniker Blackfish. River Run sits along the river road, an easy ride which links Lannisport and the crossroad. River Run is a strong three-sided castle, although not especially large. The castle is bordered on the north by the Tumble Stone and on the south by the Red Fork. West, a third side faces a massive man-made ditch. In time of danger, the sluice gates can be opened to fill a wide mot and leave the castle surrounded on all three sides by water, turning the river on into an island and leaving it practically unassailable. The castle has sandstone walls which rise sheer from the water. Its battlements are crenellated and have arrow loops. River Run's keep is located inside. A garrison of 200 men is larger than River Run requires in most circumstances. The wheel tower has a great water wheel. It has ivy climbing alongside it, and below one makes a wide turn and ends up in churning waters. The tumble stone leads to the water gate, a white arch and a heavy iron portcullis, red with the rust in its lower half. Many boats are tied up within the water gate secured to iron rings in the walls. The water stair leads from the lower bailey up to the castle. The dungeons of River Run are windowless and damp. Their doors heavy and made of wood and iron. There are also many other petty houses in the Riverlands, so is in any other region of Westeros. So is there are the houses that died out should they want to be mentioned, they would play Game of Thrones better. If you would like to see other videos about Westeros, leave your mark and show your appreciation and suggestions on which region to explore next.
I would also like to thank members of ScrivaTV.com for the help in creation of this episode. Share your thoughts in the comments.